They said Sweden's jet was too simple, too cheap, too small to matter. Then engineers quietly revealed something that flipped the entire conversation in real combat. The Gripeny might actually stay alive longer than the mighty F-35, not because it's stronger, not because it's richer, but because it's smarter. In a world where superpowers spend mountains of cash for an edge in the sky, Sweden took the opposite path. And somehow, this little jet keeps finding new ways to surprise the people who once laughed at it. At a time when Russia pushes its borders and NATO shifts like never before, air forces need fighters that don't just strike hard but survive long enough to finish the mission. The US trusts the F-35 to do that. Most countries do. It's powerful, advanced, and expensive enough to make accountants cry. But Sweden looked at the battlefield, shrugged, and built something that plays a different game. The Gripeny isn't trying to be a flying supercomputer. It's trying to be the jet that never dies and engineers, pilots, and analysts keep repeating the same thing. Survival isn't always about stealth. Sometimes, it's about strategy, speed, and refusing to be where the enemy expects you. Sweden understands that better than almost anyone. For decades, smaller nations watch giants dominate the skies with massive budgets and massive jets. The US, Russia, China, all in a race to build the most advanced fighters money can buy. Sweden didn't join that race. It walked around it. Instead of building a jet that needed an army of technicians and a dozen computers just to take off, Sweden built one that could launch from a frozen road, refuel in minutes, and then disappear again. It didn't wow people at first. Critics said the Gripen was a toy, a budget jet for countries that couldn't afford the real thing. Some experts even joked that the F-35 could detect 10 Gripens before they detected one F-35. But they forgot something important. Sweden never builds anything without a purpose. The purpose of the Gripen is survival. Staying in the fight when the world around it falls apart, when NATO held major exercises. Pilots kept noticing something strange. The Gripen didn't behave like their jets. It never showed up where radar expected it. It slipped through air defenses in ways that didn't make sense. And it did it with the confidence of a fighter that knew something others didn't. The frustration in the room was almost funny. While other jets needed complex bases and perfect logistics, the Gripen E was parked on a forest road, refueled by six soldiers, and back in the sky faster than a pilot could finish his coffee. And that was the moment. People realized Sweden wasn't trying to match the F-35, it was outmaneuvering. It, the conflict really began when engineers started comparing both jets in real wartime conditions. Not in theory, not in PowerPoints, in actual battlefield survival. They looked at the kind of chaos modern pilots face, electronic warfare, GPS jamming, missile swarms, drone saturation, low visibility combat, and massive pressure on supply chains. That's where the F-35 started shaking. It's an incredible jet, but it's also fragile. A stealth aircraft that needs special coating, special hangars, special maintenance, and an entire ecosystem of support. Without that ecosystem, the F-35 loses half its advantage. Think of it like a race car. Insanely fast, but only on a perfect track. The Gripen E is a rally car. Fast enough, tough enough, built for mud, snow, rocks, and whatever else war throws at it. Sweden built it for survival. Because Sweden never expected to fight far from home. They expected to fight with roads bombed, bases destroyed, and communications jammed by Russia. So they built a jet that could outlast the storm. As engineers dug deeper, the differences became clearer. The first advantage came from something simple. The Gripen E sees more, faster. People love to talk about stealth, but stealth isn't a permanent shield. The moment a stealth jet opens its weapons bay, uses its radar, or flies near modern sensors, it leaves traces. Gripen pilots don't rely on invisibility. They rely on awareness. The jet is full of sensors that act like little detectives, sniffing out threats from every direction. It doesn't need to hide. It sees danger before danger sees it, and when danger does come, the Gripen does something deadly in its simplicity. It just makes the missile miss. Over and over, the jet's electronic warfare suite is one of the most advanced on the planet. Engineers say it can bend the battlefield turning itself into a ghost and the enemy's missile into a confused tourist looking for directions. While some fighters trust stealth to survive, the Gripen trusts agility and electronic tricks. It doesn't hide. It outsmarts. Critics laughed at this approach. Until NATO training exercises showed missiles chasing the wrong targets again and again. Pilots began calling the Gripen's electronic defenses dark. 
magic, but the second advantage is the one that truly shocked. Engineers, the gripe in E simply refuses to stay on the ground. Most fighter jets need hours of maintenance after a mission. The F-35 needs even more, sometimes 20 hours for every hour of flight. Meter-wide logistics, technicians, tools, sensors, cooling systems, software updates. The gripe in E needs a toolbox the size of a backpack. It turns war into something flexible instead of fragile. It can disperse across hundreds of locations, never becoming a target big enough for the enemy to hit. One missile strike can take out an entire F-35 base. But good luck finding a gripe in base. It could be a highway, a parking lot, or a frozen strip between pine trees. This is why Swedish engineers laugh. When people compare the two jets in perfect scenario simulations, war is never perfect. It's messy, unpredictable, and in messy war, the gripe in E stays alive longer. Then came the turning point dot during joint exercises, something unusual happened. Gripe and East were flying simulated missions against advanced NATO fighters, including jets with stealth features. And again and again, the same result appeared. The Gripe and E lasted longer in contested airspace. Not because it was better armed. Not because it was faster. But because it could reappear in the fight more often, from more places. With fewer limitations. It was like watching a lightweight boxer outlast a heavyweight through endurance and strategy. Pilots noticed it first. The jet could take off, fight, land, refuel, rearm, and be back in the sky before some fighters even finished their maintenance cycle. And when engineers ran the numbers, something became clear in long-term combat. The superior jet isn't always the strongest. It's the survivor. The gripe and E is the survivor. The climax came when analysts compared combat endurance. If the countries faced a prolonged air war, which jet would still be flying after weeks of strikes, sabotage, and supply shortages? The F-35 was built for maximum power. The Gripe and E was built to keep going when everything else breaks, its engines are easily replaced. Its software can be updated mid-mission. Its fuel consumption is low. Its maintenance is minimal. And its flight philosophy is simple. Fight. Survive. Repeat. This idea isn't complicated. It's the same lesson armies learned a hundred years ago. The winner isn't the one who hits hardest. It's the one who stays standing, and that's where Sweden quietly surpassed a superpower. The F-35's biggest weakness isn't its performance. It's its dependency. It needs satellites, data links, specialized hangars, trained staff, and a large, stable military infrastructure. In a high-intensity war, that infrastructure becomes the first target. The Gripe and E was built assuming that infrastructure will disappear, and when that happens, the expensive jet becomes a grounded trophy. The cheap jet keeps fighting. After these findings spread, the global reaction was immediate. Countries that once dismissed Sweden as a small player began asking deeper questions. Nations like Brazil, India, Finland, Chechia, and Canada started running their own comparisons. They weren't just looking for a powerful jet. They were looking for a sustainable one. Some realized the Gripe and E offered something rare today, independence. A jet that didn't force them to rely on U.S. logistics, U.S. software or U.S. restrictions, a jet they could maintain themselves, train with themselves, and upgrade without permission, countries quietly began saying the same thing. Maybe longevity matters more than complexity. Even NATO pilots admitted the Gripen's ability to vanish and reappear made it hard to target, and harder to kill. Air forces started studying Sweden's road-based system, trying to copy it. Engineers from other countries visited Sweden to understand the maintenance model. The world didn't expect this. They thought the Gripe and E would stay a regional fighter. Instead, it became a symbol of smart warfare, while others spent billions chasing perfection. Sweden built something practical. Something that stays alive. Something that fights longer, costs less, and still carries modern weapons that hit as hard as anything on the market. The F-35 will dominate the skies in many ways. It is powerful. But power alone doesn't win long wars. Survivability does, and the Gripe and E is survivability turned into a machine dot in the end. The lesson is simple. Sweden didn't try to outmuscle the world. It outthought it dot in a sky full of giants, it built a fighter that refuses to fall. The Gripe and E wasn't made to be the biggest or the loudest. It was made to endure. And in the chaos of real combat, that endurance might be the advantage that matters most.